my life. All I know, God's been good, good to my soul. Mountain high, valley low, I'm gonna sing wherever I go. All my life, all I know, God's been good, good to my soul. ground. 
God is good, and all the time, for that is His nature. Wow, we're so glad to have you here. And speaking of wow, it is the second Sunday of Easter. As last Sunday we were celebrating, and we had an awesome and amazing Easter Sunday. At our sunrise service, you see there in the, the bulletin as you open up, about on the right-hand side, a celebration. that We had about 125 people come to our sunrise service. And then at the 9 o'clock service in the sanctuary, I think we were really close to breaking our fire marshal rules. But we had 324 people at that service. And then down here, we had about 225. And so that's just an awesome celebration. Uh, we also had around 68 children, a part of those numbers. Uh, Larissa made about 58 of those bags, and we had about a couple of children that didn't get any. So uh, we want to continue to have that grow and get bigger and bigger every year. So we're so glad to have you here with us. As we gather here for worship, we have another celebration. Our mission of the month last month was for Isaiah socks and shoes. And we set a goal out that we were going to provide 100 uh, our socks and shoes for 20 kids, and the goal was 1,200. We blew that goal out of the water, as you can see, $3,647, I think it's $27.40. Let's give God praise for that. So the bulletin says thirty-six twenty-seven. I put thirty-six forty-seven. so I have to tell Monica I have to add $20 from me to make up the difference. We don't want any false advertising up there. So what a wonderful ministry that is. Other things I want to highlight for you as well as we go through this week is we have a Wednesday night fellowship meal this Wednesday. It's a taco bar. The meal is going to be at 6 o'clock here in the Family Life Center. Children eat for free, and it's just $5 for adults. So we hope that you'll join us. You can contact the church office or the weekly email that came out. If you didn't get the weekly emails, because we don't have your email. And so on your bulletin, there's a QR code. You just use your cell phone, take a picture of the QR code. You can sign up through our website online. Just provide us your name and an email, and we'll send you a link. We want to make sure that we have plenty of tables and chairs set up. And then at 6.30, we have a wonderful praise, uh, not a praise band, but they'll do wonderful music. It's a bluegrass band. They practice here through the week. And Matt Snyder, it's his band. And so Matt Snyder and his group will be here Wednesday night following the meal at 6.30, and then the children are going to be invited. Uh, Larissa will take them out to the playground for a wonderful time for them to uh, be out there for prayer and praise. So that will be at 6.30. Uh, let us know if you're able to join us. We'd love to have as many people as possible. Uh, outside in the narthex, we had a uh, sign up for our church pictorial directory. You can do that on the way out as well. Uh, it's on Tuesday, April the 23rd from 3 to 8. I believe we have about 10 more spots to fill. If you're not able to do it on that day, you can provide a picture uh, that we can add into our new church directory. It's just $15, picture you already have made, maybe of your family, and you can do that as well. We want to uh, highlight some other announcements there on the back of your bulletin. There's a blood drive that's going on here tomorrow. We have on April, Saturday, April the 20th, a spring farm day at the, the Browns Farm. And there is a bus, that's our uh, church bus is going to be taking uh, a group early in the morning and a group later on that day. So that came out with the weekly email as well to sign up for that. 
And then Camp Gilrock church outing on Sunday, April the 21st from 1 to 5. So a lot of exciting things going on in the life and the ministry of the church. Next Sunday we'll be having two baptisms in both of the services. Uh, so we hope that uh, Jesse will get well uh, enough and be able to be here because her family's joining the church and we're baptizing their little girl, Evelyn. Uh, she's not too little anymore. She keeps growing and growing and growing. Uh, I think she'll be up here singing with Jesse before you know it. Uh, but we'll be baptizing Evelyn and we have another baptism at the 9 o'clock service. Also next Sunday we'll be saying a special prayer over our mission teams to Guatemala because the first group will be leaving on April the 20th. And then the second group will be leaving on April the 27th. So we'll be saying a special commissioning prayer upon them next Sunday. I want to mention some prayers. But before I mention some prayers, I want to offer a praise of thanksgiving. This is a uh, thank you card that came in the mail this week from Kelly's grandfather. We lifted him up in prayer for many months. And uh, he had some emergency surgery. Surgery uh, recovery didn't go as well as planned. He had to go on dialysis because his kidneys weren't functioning very well. But now he's fully, almost fully recovered. He's not on dialysis anymore and his kidneys are working well. So I just want to read you this thank you card. He says, to all my church families, my faithful prayer warriors and believers, an emotional heartfelt gratitude of spiritual love is expressed to each of you for the countless thoughts and prayers during my recent illness. And then he writes this in big bold print and underlines. And he says, oh, how powerful prayers are! Exclamation point. And then he continues to say, I am truly blessed by strong support from you all. And he writes, James 5 verses 13 through 16 reminds us to pray in faith with verse 15 emphasizing the power of healing. And the prayer offered in faith will make the sick person well. In, Christ, in Christian love, Bill Carter. So that's a wonderful uh, prayers and uh, answer to prayers and uh, thanksgiving. I want to ask us to be in prayer for Audrey McKenna. She's the 13-year-old girl that's been fighting seizures her whole entire life. And she was taken to the hospital yesterday because the seizures were uncontrollable. And I got a message this morning that she has not had any seizures uh, no more seizures since 6 o'clock last night. So they were able to get them under control, but they were definitely off and on and getting to be uncontrollable. So continue to lift up Audrey to you, uh, to with, with you all today. Lynn Gordon is doing well. She continues to recover from her surgery. We continue to pray for Mike Murphy. He had two falls this week. He was taken to the hospital, but he is back home. We pray for Judy Mishu's brother who's in the hospital. And uh, Emily Sarah Limebeck. She started five weeks of radiation uh, this Tuesday as she's fighting cancer. We pray for a lot of others on our prayer list, those who are recovering from surgery and those shut-ins. On Wednesdays, we sent out a prayer email to, to our prayer warriors. And so if you'd like to be a prayer warrior for this church, please let us know, and we'll add you to that email list. We pray for those that are fighting cancer. We pray for our Guatemala mission teams. We pray for the situation in the Middle East. And we have many, many unspoken prayers among our church family. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Gracious God, we thank you and we praise you for the glory of this day. We thank you that we have a place to come to worship you. To gather together with our brothers and sisters in Christ. To allow our hearts to be lifted up by music and singing praises to you. And we get to sing hallelujah. Hallelujah in the name of Jesus. But many of us come here through many different walks of life. Some of us come here with absolute assurance that you, Jesus, died on the cross for all of our sins. And that three days later, the power of God showed up and brought your dead body back to life. And that we believe in the resurrection. But maybe for some of us, we have doubts. We struggle with our doubts and worries and our fears. They sometimes become so overwhelming that we're saying, God, where are you? in the midst of our lives that seems to be like we're swimming in the middle of the ocean. No land in sight, no help, and we sometimes find ourselves gasping for air. Lord, may you reach down and grab us. May you be the one to wipe away all of our doubts and be the faith that we need to express our trust in you. May we grow in our faith in this worship service 
May those that are worshiping with us online and the list of names that we've lifted up out loud and even the unspoken prayers, the groanings that are deep within us, that you are our God, that hear our prayers. Give us a faith to know that you hear our prayers and that you work in mysterious ways and that even in death, it is not the end. That we believe in the resurrection. We believe in what the scriptures say. We believe that it is the word of God inspired through your Holy Spirit to speak into our heart and our soul. And Lord, when we come here to pray, we close our eyes, we bow our heads, but we open up our heart to you. We ask that you would move in a mighty and powerful way in our lives here today. Allow us to grow in our faith. Remove all the doubts from us. Remove all those distractions so that we can join our voices together with a faith and a confidence to pray the prayer that Jesus taught his own disciples to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us of our trespasses as we forgive those who have trespassed against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. As the ushers are coming forward for this morning's offering, may we think about this basket being passed from one person to the next. About putting ourselves in that basket, offering ourselves to the glory of God as a response of Him first loving us. We thank you so much for the extravagant generosity that you give to support the missions and the ministries of this church. How great the that lay between us How high the mountain I could not climb In desperation I turned to heaven And spoke your name Into the night Then through the darkness Your loving could fathom such boundless grace the God of ages stepped down from glory to wear my sin and bear my shame the cross has spoken I am forgiven the king of kings calls me Christ, my living hope. We stand and join us.
your buried body began to breathe out of the silence the roaring lion declared the grave has no claim on me then came the morning that sealed the promise your buried body began to If you'll sing, Jesus loves me, as the children come to the front and join Miss Larissa. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to Him belong. They are weak, but He is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me, the Bible tells me so. Good morning. I am glad to see you, and we're going to do something a little bit different today. Now, a lot of times the adults say that they're a little bit jealous that you guys get to come down and do stuff, so I thought we would include them today. Are you guys okay with that? Just this one time. Is it okay? Okay, we're going, to let, we're going to let you guys participate with us. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to ask in the back if you guys will put up the picture for me. Okay, now here's what you're going to do. Do you see those four black dots kind of in the middle of that screen? Here's what we're going to do. I'm going to tell you a story, and while I'm doing that, you have to keep your eyes, adults too, your eyes on those four dots. Don't look away. Try not to blink. You're going to keep your eyes on those four dots while I, while I say something about the story today. Okay, are you ready? Get your eyes ready. Adults, get ready. All right, so Jesus came back to life, and the disciples met in a room together. They were a little bit afraid because they were worried what might happen. Keep looking. They were worried what might happen to them. They were in the room. The doors were locked. The windows were closed. And then something happened. All right, close your eyes. What do you see? Did you guys see Jesus? Some of you did. Some people can, and some people can't. Adults, how many of you saw Jesus? Some of you saw him? Yeah, very good. It's a wonderful story because Jesus appeared to the disciples, but... There was one that was missing. Since you guys aren't going to be here, I'm going to spoil Pastor Mike's story a little bit. He said he thought maybe Thomas went out for pizza. Do you think that might be true? Anyway, he wasn't there. He came back, and the disciples were so excited about what had happened. But he said, unless I can see it, I don't believe it. So in a few days, Jesus appeared to Thomas. And he said, Thomas, look at my hands. Now we know what had happened to Jesus' hands. He had been on the cross, and so what was... What had happened? There was a place in the middle where the, that, that, that nail had been. 
And so Thomas wanted to see it, and so Jesus said, look. And finally, Thomas got it. He believed. He knew that Jesus had come back to life. And then he said something that has to do with us. He said, Thomas, you believe because you saw me, but blessed are those who believe without seeing. And that's us. We don't have Jesus with us here on earth, but we can still pray to him and talk to him and learn about him. And Jesus said that we are blessed because we believe in him without seeing. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord, that you sent Jesus for us. Help us to never stop telling that good news and to believe without seeing. In your name I pray, amen. All right, if you are second grade or younger and would like to go to kids' worship, I'll meet you in the back. If you are third grade or older, you may pick up one of these sheets. Hands go up to the question of, did you see Jesus? And I hope that you'll take that witness out into the world. That if someone says, I, have you seen Jesus? And you're like, yep, I've seen Jesus today. And I close my eyes. Isn't that interesting? In order to see Jesus, you had to do what? Close your eyes. But before you close your eyes, you had to stare. You had to stare and then closing your eyes and that image of Jesus appeared. Um, I thought I was supposed to stare at the thing and Jesus was going to appear on the screen in the 9 o'clock service and I'm going, oh, I'm not getting it again. Every time someone shows me one of those things and it's like, you're trying to hold it away from you and do this and that, and you're like, I can't figure this out. And you're like, oh yeah, it's a horse. And you're going, a horse? I don't see it. And our scripture passage today is from the Gospel of John, chapter 20, verses 19 through 31. Uh, Wyatt Lampley's not able to read the scripture for us today, so I'm going to read it to you. It begins with verse 19. It says, When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you receive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who is called the twin, one of the twelve was not with them, When Jesus came, so the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger in the mark of the nails, and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to them, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Gracious God, thank you so much for this living word of God. May it inspire us to want to read more of this gospel of John. To allow our doubts to lead us to a faith only in you. So that our faith would eliminate all doubts. To have all the assurance we need as a disciple of Jesus Christ. Remove all distractions from us here God. And allow the words of my mouth to be pleasing upon you. 
May we have a hunger and a thirst to rededicate our life to you and believe in the resurrection and that our sins are forgiven. We thank you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. So do you have any doubts? I think many of us have doubts. I don't think you could say that you are a human being and say you don't have doubts. It kind of goes hand in hand. We have doubts about what maybe is going to happen later on today. Many of you even doubted your own basketball team when you were filling out that bracket. I myself doubted my team that I root for. I was like, they didn't play very good defense in the ACC tournament, so why would they play defense in the NCAA tournament? So I didn't have Duke go as far as they did. But I know downstairs in our D building where the weekday school after school group made up brackets, man, some of them have amazing faith in the NC State basketball team. Because some of them had them going to the championship and winning it all. They got close, didn't they? Got really, really close. And so many of them had a greater faith than others. But some of us had doubts. Because didn't they lose how many games before they got to the ACC tournament? It was like four or five games in a row they lost. No one, only God could know that they were going to win that many games. We have doubts in our lives when it comes to Are we a good parent? Are you doing everything right? Are you being the best parent you can be? We have doubts if we're being the the best spouse we can be in our marriage. We have doubts if we're being a really good friend. Maybe we have doubts of being a good co-worker. Or maybe with our family. We have doubts that if our family, we love them unconditionally, and some days that requires a lot of effort than others. We sometimes have doubts about our relationship with Jesus Christ. How close should we be in our relationship with him? Should we be this close or should we be this close? I know I feel more comfortable this close. I mean, we we sometimes have doubts. Should we be growing in our relationship? Are we praying enough? Are we serving enough? Are we reading our Bible enough? Doubts about enough become endless. Doubts almost become a part of our DNA as human beings. And the devil loves to exploit our doubts. He loves to take those seeds of doubts and not just spread them, but also water them so that they can grow almost like a spiritual cancer in our lives. That that little seed of doubt becomes a wedge that separate us between us and our Heavenly Father. But Jesus came down to eliminate these doubts. Even when he told his disciples at least three times, I'm going to be arrested, I'm going to be beaten, I'm going to be nailed to a cross. But just wait, three days later, God will raise me from the dead. So why does Thomas get a bad name? Why does he give a bad name? The first night, that Easter, we know what happened that morning. That Easter morning, Mary Magdalene and the women went to the tomb and to take care of the body of Jesus the dead body of Jesus, to finish the burial process. And they get to the tomb and it's empty. They go back and tell the disciples they don't believe because two of them, Peter and John, the beloved disciple, go running to the tomb because they don't believe what Mary Magdalene and the other women were saying. They've got to see it for themselves. And they get there and the tomb is empty. They go back to the house in fear, close the doors, close the windows, you know, because they thought what happened to Jesus was going to happen to them. Remember Peter denying to know Jesus at least three times? Deny, deny, deny. And Jesus says that was going to happen. But we have all the disciples there in this room that night, and Jesus appears. But not all the disciples were there, right? One disciple was missing. Somehow, some way, Thomas was not there. And I jokingly tell youth and children that I think Thomas was out to get pizza because the disciples have to eat. I mean, they have to eat and do something, so they all cast lots, they drew straws, Thomas drew the short end of the straws, and he's like, oh, I'll go get the pizzas. So we're not told in the scriptures why he's not there, but for some reason, he's not. And Jesus appears. You can imagine when Thomas comes back, they're like, Thomas, you won't believe what happened. Jesus was right here. Uh, yeah, right. I just wonder how many times they tried to trick Thomas or, you know, you get him to be gullible about something. And Thomas is like, I've had it enough. You're not getting me on this. You're not. I'm not going to believe 
until I can see Jesus and put my finger in the wounds of his hands. And not only the wounds of his hands, I want to stick my hand in the wound of his side where the the soldier used a spear to make sure he was dead on the cross. He shoved the spear in the side of him. That's where I'm going to believe. I have to see and touch. And you got to do all these things, then I'm going to believe. Well, it isn't just the next day, 24 hours. It's not 48 hours, not 72 hours. A whole entire week later, Thomas is stubborn in his doubt. I'm not going to believe. You all believe because you see. And he gets this bad name, doesn't he? Doubting Thomas. But all the other disciples were doubting the resurrection. But they got to see Jesus before him. And they were probably going, come on, Thomas, just believe. I'm not going to believe until I see and touch. And then a whole week later, Jesus appears. What is about that name, Doubting Thomas? Kind of a bad nickname, isn't it? How many of you would like to have Doubting before your name? Or even a pastor. Hey, this is our new pastor, Pastor Doubting Mike. Like, that doesn't sound like a good preacher name. But what if a nickname that could be funny? Maybe you have a nickname. Maybe you have friends that have nicknames. There's this comedian. His wonderful, his name is Brad Upton. He's a, a wonderful, funny comedian. I like comedians that are funny and clean with their jokes. And he shares this story that as a kid growing up, he was just out in the woods with his friends. They were always up to something and doing something crazy. And he shares a story about two of his friends that have a very unique nicknames. One named Amor and the other named Niner. And he shares this story that Amor had older brothers. And him and his older brothers like to blow things up. And in blowing things up, one of the times a shrapnel hit Amor in the eye. And he has to squint all the time. That's why they called him Amor. Because it looks like he was aiming a gun. He went to school and it says, is Charles here? And like, where's no Charles? Where's there's a Charles? And he's like, Amor? Is your name Charles? He's like, yeah, my name's, my name's Charles, but people call me Amor. And the teacher says, why do people call you Amor? And he goes, because I'm always looking like I'm shooting a gun. I'm aiming the gun. This was back in the day where a kid could probably sh- look like he's shooting at the teacher. You can't do that nowadays. But then he had another friend named Niner. And Niner, they, you know how kids love to climb trees? How many of you are one of those kids that love to climb trees? Well, when you have a group of boys together climbing a tree, it's always the fun game of who can climb the highest up into the tree. Well, this boy, Niner, before he was called Niner, climbed to the top of the tree the fastest and got higher than everybody. But then, as far as you go up, as far as you got to come down, and he came falling out, he broke on a branch, and he falls, he's grabbing branches on his way down, and he gets to he hits the ground, and he's like, man, he gets up, and he's like, man, there's blood, I don't know who, where's the blood? And he looked down at his hand, and he lost a finger. That's why they called him Niner, because he only had nine fingers. So these funny names and nicknames, just like Thomas, he probably didn't like being called Doubting Thomas at first, but I bet you... Whenever Jesus showed up a week later and he called him by name and he said, Thomas, come on up here. Stick your finger in the wound of my hand. Stick your hand in the wound of my side and then you will believe. Because you said that. I heard you say it. And so I don't know if Thomas actually went and approached Jesus. I bet you he didn't. I think seeing Jesus and hearing him call his name, the, the words that after his eyes got this big and his jaw dropped, I can only imagine that the only thing that he could say here in the scriptures was this. My Lord and my God. You see, we can have doubt even that leads us to faith. But sometimes doubt will lead us to our unbelief and not have any faith in Jesus. But Thomas had doubts, but he believed because he saw Jesus says, you believe because you have seen, but blessed are those who believe without seeing. But many of you, I was getting ready to ask, how many of you have seen Jesus? Some of you raised your hand. You saw Jesus today by staring at that picture, and then you closed your eyes, and you could see the face of Jesus. How many of us have desired to see Jesus in our lives? And may you not not see the physical body of Jesus with the wounds on his hands like Thomas did and the other disciples before Jesus ascended into heaven. After 40 days, he ascends into heaven. 
But he breathes the Holy Spirit upon them. And he tells them about the forgiveness of sins. And he tells them that just as the Father has sent me, so I send you. And he says to them, peace be with you. Almost like do not fear. Have peace in the midst of this chaos. So how can doubt lead to faith? Can it? I believe that it can. The doubting Thomas didn't believe, but now he believes because he sees. Jesus showed up again to Thomas and called him by name. So doubt and faith can coexist in someone's life at the same time. But that's not the case with unbelief. It says, however, as sin can creep in during moments of temptation and unbelief can be born amid doubt. So what does God say about doubt? Does God say it's okay to be a Christian and have doubts? Or when we grow in our faith and our discipleship, as we read scriptures and know that it's the living word of God, does doubt begin to wash away? When we pray for other people, when we read our scriptures, when we come to worship and we say, God, I want to know that you are real. Work in a mysterious way in my life. May I be like a doubting Thomas. And I bet you Thomas began to own his nickname, just like Amor and Niner owned theirs. They thought it was funny. They thought it was a, a great thing to be Niner and Amor. I bet you Thomas, as he went around to town to town and village to village and met with people, he says, yes, I am doubting Thomas. But let me tell you about Jesus. He showed up that day. He called me by name. And I believe in the resurrection because I see and I touched him. And I know that you haven't seen him and you haven't touched him. But he is alive. He's no longer dead. He died on the cross for all your sins. And he has set the world free from sin because he was the ultimate sacrifice. And Jesus said these words, hey, Thomas, you believe because you see. But blessed are those who who believe without seeing. And those people began to hear the gospel and the good news through Doubting Thomas. So whatever nickname you have, maybe it's a doubting nickname. Maybe you struggle in your faith. But what if today, as you come forward this morning for Holy Communion, that we could allow these words that we share in invitation and confession and pardon and the great thanksgiving, that we receive this blessing as the body and the blood of Christ. John Wesley, the founder of the Methodist Church, believed that an invitation to come forward would uh, allow for a conversion experience. Maybe you've accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. You can't even remember the last time that you did that. But I believe every day is a profession of faith. As you come forward, it's saying, God, I need you. I might have doubts, but I want to know you more. I want to grow in that relationship that I, I know this never enough. I want to know you to be the real Lord and Savior of my life and that you have set me free to no longer have any doubts but to be the body of Christ redeemed in the blood of Jesus so that we become the body of Christ covered in the blood of Jesus. How would it be for us to be set free to no longer have any doubts but to hold on to that cross, to hold on to our faith and that it would go beyond what we've ever seen or ever experienced. In the name of Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. As we move to this invitation. That I hope and pray that we never take for granted. That Christ our Lord invites to his table. All who love him. Who earnestly repent of their sin. And seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore let us confess our sin. Before God and one another. If you'll read this part with me. Go to the next slide. Right there. Thank you. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors. And we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray in silence. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love for us. In the name of Jesus Christ, 
you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Amen. As we move to the great thanksgiving, let us hear this invitation of God's love, mercy, and grace. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God, and brought to us to a land flowing with milk and honey, to set it before us the way of life. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Amen. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. By your great mercy, we have been born anew to a living hope, through the resurrection of your Son from the dead, and to an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading. Once we were no people, but now we are your people, declaring your wonderful deeds in Christ, who called us out of darkness into your marvelous light, when on the night in which he gave himself up for us, Jesus took bread. He gave thanks to you. He broke the bread gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so. On the day you raised him from the dead, he was recognized by his disciples in the breaking of the bread and in the power of your Holy Spirit. Your church has continued in the breaking of the bread and the sharing of the cup. And so in remembrance of these your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ has risen, Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on all of us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and the blood of Christ that we may be for the world, the body of Christ redeemed by His blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at His heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, With your Holy Spirit and your Holy Church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Those that are helping to uh, serve communion, if you'll please come forward. I want to give you some instructions. We're going to do communion a little bit different uh, today. When we do communion, we're going to serve the two middle sections, and then we'll go to the outer sections and serve you guys after the middle sections are done. We have uh, pita bread. Uh, so they're cut in long strips, and so you can come forward to receive the, the bread, and then you can do it in tinction, which is taking your bread and dipping it into the cup, taking the elements both at the same time. The other option is that we do have pre-made cups with a wafer on there, and we also do have uh, gluten-free as well. If you have any questions or concerns, you can ask the ushers about any of that, but we'll direct the middle sections, come down the middle, and then go back on the sides. If you want to have time of prayer, you may do that here at the front as well.
a wretch I remembered who I was I was lost, I was blind I was running out of time Sin separated The breach was far too wide From the far side of the chasm You held me in your side So you made a way Across the great divide That behind heaven's throne Then at the cross you paid the debt I owe Broke my chains, freed my soul For the first time I had hope Thank you Jesus for the blood of life Thank you Jesus it has washed me white no steam and life has no end for I have been transformed by the blood of the Lamb thank you Jesus for the blood of life thank you Jesus has washed me white And the wonder-working power of the blood, the blood, that calls us sons and daughters. We are ransomed by our Father through the Please stand and join us for our last song, Because He Lives. I believe in the sun. I believe in the one. I believe I overcome by the 
may not know this, but Methodist was a derogatory term given to that small group of John Wesley and his other guys that would meet in a small group to revitalize the Anglican church. He didn't have plans to start a new church, but once that began to take off and they made fun of them calling them Methodist because there was a method to their small groups, they would ask certain questions, they would pray with each other, and they would do it on a regular basis. And they're like, you're just a bunch of Methodists. And how John Wesley and the rest of them says, you know what, I'm going to take that nickname and I'm going to own it and I'm going to live it out. So how can we be more Methodist in our daily lives as Christians and as disciples of Jesus Christ? And that we can allow these songs that we sing and the words that are preached here on Sunday morning come to life in us. Is that all doubts are washed away because even those doubts that we have, every single one of them leads us to Jesus Christ and having faith in Him. May you go forth this day, even if we're a doubting Thomas, may we see Jesus living in and out of our lives as they saw Jesus in the resurrection that day, that evening, that week, in the weeks, and the months, and all throughout this world where Jesus has showed up in miraculous ways. May we go out to be His hands and His feet as the body of Christ redeemed in His blood. For we thank you and we praise you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And all of God's children said, Amen. Amen. All my life. 